Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video to take a first look at this latest quad that I've got in here from Armatan. This is the Armatan Beaver. Yes, I know, insert your favorite beaver joke below. Keep it clean. But this is the first frame that I've had in from Armatan, first ready to fly quad actually in this case, for about three years. The last one that I had in from those guys was this one. This is the Marmot. Now this was that kind of um, lower profile with a very complicated machined enclosure for the cameras and things have moved on. Chris has obviously been very busy during the COVID lockdowns and coming up with the latest and greatest version. Now I need to say before I get too far into this, I am a fan of Armatan quads. I've been flying them almost as long as I've been flying quadcopters because my first ever real quadcopter, check this out, is this one here. This was actually built by Chris back in about 2012. I think it must have been probably December 2012. Back then, Armatan was just kind of a passion project for Chris. And this is called the CNC 258. It's CNC'd aluminium arms, aluminium center plate, and a KK 2.0. Now this is real old school. Uh, this was where it kind of started to become the hobby as we know it today. And Chris was at the forefront of designing some really fantastic models and shipping them beautifully tuned with the KK 2.0. So I've been flying Armatan as long as I've been a quad pilot and Armatan as a brand has a pretty special place in my heart. Now it's interesting that Armatan continues to be one of the key players in terms of innovative frame design because I've even seen some of the channels here on YouTube hosted by alleged quadcopter experts that have actually built their frames wrong and then done a negative review. These frames are not difficult to put together and when put together right, they're pretty bulletproof. The other thing about the Armatan stuff is that it's backed up by a lifetime warranty. Now that only works, of course, is if the company's still in business. So other people who have claimed a lifetime warranty who are no longer in business, that's kind of not worth its paper it's written on, is it? However, Armatan is still going strong. If you break the carbon, if you break the metal, then you can get it replaced by Armatan. And that, particularly, if you're harder on frames, is worth its weight in gold. So the specs on this new Armatan Beaver, the frame weight uh, naked of any bits and pieces is 126 grams. Motor to motor is 235 millimeters. Again, is a compressed X, which seems to be the way those guys do it. Main plate thickness is 2.5 millimeters. Arm thickness, as we'll look at in a moment, is a bit thicker than normal from Armatan. It's five millimeters. The motor mount patterns are 16 by 16 or 16 by 19 or 90 by 19. So it will fit pretty much any of the modern motor types. The FPV camera mount at the front is a 19 millimeter or 20 millimeter setup. The distance between the top and bottom plates is a bit wider on this than some of the previous versions at 25 millimeters. And again, all of the carbon fiber and aluminium frame parts are under the lifetime warranty. Recommended components on this are 2306 1700 kV motors, ESCs, something like a 45 amp four in one from Skystar, prop size HQ Juicy would be good, 5.1 by four by three, and the battery of the one on 4S between 13 to 1600, or 6S between 11 to 1300. So talking to Chris, there are a number of things that they've been working on during that time since the last frame design. And that breaks down into three or four headlines really. So let's have a quick look at the frame and see if we can spot where those things are. The first thing you notice when you take it out is that the arms themselves are a lot thicker than other arms on other models. If you compare that with one of the previous versions, uh, they are a little bit thicker and that along with the rest of the design uh, seems like they've really put some thought into this. 
Now, the cool thing about these frames are, of course, that they're covered by the Armitan lifetime warranty, and that covers the frame and also the metal bits too. So if you do break something, then you know what? It's no problem. You can get a replacement. But it's kind of cool things, like if we flip it over, for example, you can see that this frame, compared to the older ones, is much wider. And the, the supports and the mounts for things like the arms have a lot more meat underneath when you compare it to some of the older frames. Whereas some of the older frames, the arms just literally bolted in. Uh, here, there's also this lower plate that's protecting everything. It all slots into, um, I think they call it a brassiere or something in the middle. There's also some foam pieces in here as well when you nip everything up to make sure it's absolutely spot on. But in terms of the rest of the frame, the top deck is reasonably normal. Uh, there's a little bit more room inside than you tend to see. Now, they have gone back and stayed with the separate arms. Um, I don't have any particular axe to grind either way. I know some pilots get really emotional about whether or not it's a single uh, unit or there's lots of separate arms. If you are regularly breaking things, then having separate arms means that it's a relatively quick and easy thing to swap out at the field. If you're flying, you just undo the four bolts, take your motor off. On this one, it's a single bolt to take the arm off. That also means that in terms of the weave placement, because again, this is a compressed X like the older ones, it means that you can try and line up the carbon fiber in the strongest way possible. So it means that you can cut the arms in the strongest way and then put them into position with all this extra hardware here to keep everything nice and strong. Some other cute tricks as well. Now, of course, Armatan has always had these metal covers for the cameras at the front and the metal struts at the back, which does make it incredibly rigid and very tough. But what they've got in here, and hopefully the camera's picking that up, is a little piece of aluminium that can be bent to different sizes for different cameras, but also is designed that if something does strike the camera, that aluminium can move and deform rather than the camera take the energy. It can be transferred into those little pieces and those are the ones that are going to get messed up. So it's, as usual, designed for survivability and designed to try and survive as many of the nasty crashes that you'll probably end up having when you're flying hard without destroying everything. Next thing was the idea to reduce the amount of vibration going into the flight controller. Now, this is something that we always, in the early days, used to worry about with the very early models because the props were so big, swing swinging so slowly. Obviously, having a nice rigid frame is really important for this. And talking to Chris, uh, they reckon this is the stiffest frame they've ever made. And with all of this extra gubbins here at the bottom for these individual arms, Yep, I can kind of believe that. This does feel incredibly strong with minimum amounts of flex. In the older days, they did do some of the versions of their models with that single bottom plate. But this feels very, very like it's made out of one piece. Now, of course, if you don't have all that noise going into the flight controller, and again, there's actually some pieces in here, like some very thin foam that's actually um, clamping these arms into position that also helps dampen vibration everything on this ready to fly version is on vibration isolating mounts surprise surprise and that does mean that if you're playing around with tunes and the black box stuff then it's going to be a little bit easier you're not going to have to work around all of that vibration Ease of maintenance is much better on this than on the other frames that they've done. There is a lot more room in between the bottom and top decks. Um, back the last one, if you look at the difference between the two, um, this was that kind of super slammed frame design that everyone was all, all excited about four or five years ago. This is much more uh, what we need these days, in my humble opinion. Uh, there's so many different ways to build these things. There's so much different technology you want to put in them, different VTXs, you know, open HD, HD zero, walk snail, the DJI equipment, all kinds of gubbins. Having that extra bit of room means you don't have to worry about that. Um, there were times when I wanted to put things in an Armatan frame where I couldn't because it was just too low. This new Beaver means that there is definitely 
easily enough between the two decks. In fact, if I quickly measure that, that looks like about 25 millimeters, which should be enough for everybody. Now, in terms of removing the arms, uh, this is pretty straightforward. There's literally only one bolt that you have to undo and the arms are going to slide out. At the end of the arms, there's like a fork that goes into a central piece here that keeps everything locked in place. So single bolt isn't going to be particularly stressful to do that at the field. And I like the way they're using these aluminium supports here for those bolts. And they also go into captive nuts here at the top. So that means that fantastically the nut isn't going to fall off into the grass at the field and you're never going to see it again. With removal of the top plate, which is done by undoing the six screws, you have the four at the front and two at the back, the top lift lifts off and you have access to everything. And it's very, very easy to work on because you have so much space and so much room. And they've made it so that you can have the different flight controller stacks here in the middle and there's mounting holes for all the different sizes, as well as your VTX option out here at the back. Now on my version here, this obviously has the uh, DJI unit light here at the back. This The mounting holes are here. However, I think the new versions have mounting holes also that will support things like walk snail. I might have to drill a few in here, which is going to be a bit heartbreaking, but I probably will put my walk snail system in here for some of the flight testing. In terms of the looks, I think it looks pretty, particularly when you get ready to fly from Armaton like this. The way they build these out, the cables are all just long enough with just the right amount of strain relief. Everything is beautifully rooted and wired and put together, and it's just fantastic out the box. You can tell an Armaton frame in my humble opinion, from meters away because of the way it looks. And part of it is these metal pieces. Now, I know lots of people have now copied this cage design, but uh, I do like this slightly anodized orange color that they've popped in here. Anything that can help find this thing when it goes down in long grass is going to be worth its weight in gold. And props to Armatan for also adding buzzer in this as well. Last couple of notes then are going to be on how they've actually built this out, how they've done it. Now compared to some of the recent builds that I've had in, this has ESCs out on the arms, which is a much more common way to see Armatan kit being shipped. The CL Racing flight controller, which Armatan have been using for a long time, this time they're using a 4-in-1, but they're using the pads here out to protect it so that if there is a blade strike it isn't going to cut your ESC wires. The other thing as well is that they've actually double wrapped that in quite heavy heat shrink which also gives you an extra little bit of protection. The carbon fiber finish, surprise surprise, is exactly what you'd expect from Armatan. It is glorious. I have no worries about getting splinters or cuts on any part. Everything is beautifully rounded off. And the soldering always makes me feel like I really need to do some more practice, even though I've been soldering at this point for the best part of 40 years. Plugging the beaver into beta flights, there's no real surprises in here at all. Chris and the team do a lot of work to make sure that it's as close to ready to rock and roll as it can possibly be. However, if you're going to be getting something like this in the bind of fly configuration, I'd recommend plugging it in and making sure that everything is set up how you want your on-screen display, the modes and everything else. Only thing to note in here is that there are three beta flight profiles that have been set up from the factory by Armatan beginner, intermediate and advanced and the default profile that's set as you get it is beginner. So if you don't want to fly in that default profile then you'll need to change that into one of the others to get the most out of the model. I have done dump and diff down below if you're interested in having a look at how this comes shipped from Armatan. So there you have it, quick overview of my new Ready to Fly Armatan Beaver. I might make a couple of changes, I'm going to use the DJI FPV controller, so I'll have to kind of rewire and remove the additional receiver at the back. This one has the FreeSky receiver, and I'm going to use the DJI stuff to fly it as well as look out the front. 
um, and then I'm going to get some flying in and give you a full review in the fullness of time. My expectation is this will fly like every other Armatan model. Chris and the team put a huge amount of effort into making sure these things are tuned beautifully. So I fully expect that this is just going to put a big silly grin on my face. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.